So let's start, if we can, with the idea, Christopher Biggins, of Boris Johnson turning up at COP27, which is this massive global climate summit, uh, which would be very awkward for the Prime Minister, who has boycotted the event effectively. And we were talking earlier about this, Aidan, weren't we? We were yeah. just saying that, you know, they all go over in their jets, uh, causing even more problems uh, for the environment. And, of course, Boris wants to make himself known again. I mean, you know, he was, he was going to come and, uh, and, and try and become the, the prime minister again. So he wants, he wants to really up his image, I think, you know. So anything, he'll be going to the first night of my pantomime in Darlington well, next. you come from the world of <laughs> television, theatre and film. You know about big egos. Yes. Oh. Uh, th this is brinkmanship. This is Boris Johnson muscling in and upstaging the Prime Minister. Of course it is. United. Of course it is. I mean, that's what, that's what he's doing. And it, it's, you know, if that's what he wants to do, let him go. But let him go in an air balloon or something, you know, let him not go in a jet. Let well, him, I, let... I still think it's a triumph that Sunak's not going. I think so. I agree I with you. Because he's sending out a clear message. Yes. So first of all, that he's focused on our economic problems at home. Yeah. And secondly, that he doesn't want to sign up to this ideology around climate change. I don't think anyone disagrees that we should clean up the planet. No. Nope. Uh, there's a debate to be had about how to control rising temperatures. Yeah. Uh, but this narrative that we've essentially got to give up our car, give up the boiler and eat ants for the rest of our lives is for the birds. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Sunak seems to have bought into that rejection of this ideology. Well, That's vegans it. won't let us eat ants. <laughs> well, yeah, point. You've had a few. I have a few things. Time. I have, <laughs> and I, I love to remember them. But I mean, I think that he's once again. You know what annoys me about politics nowadays mm -hmm. is the fact that there is screaming matches across Westminster. You know, from the Labour to the Conservative to the Lib Dems, everybody's screaming at each other aggressively. And why don't they all get together and try and solve the terrible problems that we're in? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, is, there's no, is no answer to actually shout and get aggressive and, 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 and say terrible things about the people who are in that building. They should be in there doing things about what is going on. Aidan McGee, I think Rishi Sunak has read the room brilliantly here by staying at home. Yeah, I mean, look, he's trying to... He's in a position where his party and his newly formed government are in a really tricky situation. They, they've got basically two, two years to regain some of that support, that groundswell of support that swept Boris Johnson into power back in December 2019. So he's saying the right things, OK? We can see examples on the front pages this evening of where he's saying the right things. He's talking about the end to woke policing and things like that. So we'll see, we'll see if he actually means it. But this is an action. This is something that he can be judged on. He's not attending... COP27. The hypocrisy of this pervades all areas of public life. About seven or eight years ago, I did a story on Arsenal Football Club, and they were, in, in, they were entwined into and embedded into all the Premier League narrative on climate change, and yet they got a, a plane from Stansted to Norwich for an away game. They're in the air for about eight and a half minutes. Yeah. And that's issue a statement saying, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, we didn't realise that might be problematic for the environment. So this hypocrisy is, is, is everywhere. And I think that was one of the points where I kind of started to lose faith in Boris Johnson, when he started whispering on about this nonsense, he called it his road to Damascus yeah. uh, moment. I mean, really, we all know it was his wife just sort of pecking in, yeah. in, in, the, in the, the background. Brit Britain would be the Saudi Arabia of wind. Yeah, is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out he was the Saudi Arabia of hot air. Yeah. But he can go to COP27 and he can have the photo call and pretend he's still Prime Minister Ashleen. Meanwhile, we've got an actual PM in London, fixing the country's problems. Yeah, so bravo to him. I think that's brilliant. But I just don't understand why they can't do it all via Zoom anyway. Why have we got to take point. planes all the way to whatever country? Where is it? Egypt. Uh, Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Exactly that. So, I mean, <laughs> isn't that counterproductive? I thought the March for Mummies should have been in Egypt. Yeah, well, now you're talking. <laughs> That's what I agree with. Um, has Richie about... also banned uh, the king from going? Yes, he has. Yes, yeah, which we, I which think... Liz Truss vetoed it. Yeah. So they said the king shouldn't go, and, and uh, now Sunak has upheld that decision. Yeah, well, I think that's right, too. I think he's going to be good. I think there is, yeah. there's some very good things that he's doing already.